Hello, I'm going to show you today how to make a very simple widget and plugin in WordPress. It's not as hard as you might think, but it is a little bit difficult. So if you've never seen PHP code at all before, it'll be a little bit challenging for you. You'll still be able to do it, but you won't really be able to go off on your own and make a lot of customizations without, I don't know, learning PHP. So. Uh, let's get right into it. Just know that this isn't going to be a super duper easy tutorial if you don't know really anything other than HTML, but it's going to be very easy to follow. And it is very rewarding and extremely helpful. So now let's get into it. Okay, so before we get started with all the code, I kind of want to show you the goal of this. Um, right now I'm inspecting the code of my test site. We see this little hi there stuff. Uh, so within my widgets, I have this code wrapper widget that I created, and then I typed in hi there as the code I want wrapped in other code. And the end result on the site is this div. I added a little comment, a special class, and then that code itself, which if we take a quick look at the uh, file that drives all of this, we see that there's this code here and then that ending div. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to my Learn with Zach blog post wherein this uh, video is hosted because you can download both of these files and work from them. If you're writing it all from scratch, it's going to be really hard. So if you're watching this on YouTube, just look in the YouTube description below this video for a link to where you can download the source files. Now, this plugin is very simple, uh, but it's very effective, especially for client websites. A great example of when you might want to do this is if you want it where the client <clears throat> just has to type in their YouTube video ID and it embeds that video for them. Because YouTube embed codes are all the same, it's just that the ID in the code is different. So that would be a great way to make your client's life much simpler. And that's in fact why I first learned how to do this. So when you open up the folder after uh, downloading the source code, you'll see that it's a zip, just unzip it, and you'll see there are these two files, index and code wrapper dot class. Notes will not be there, and you will have unzipped this, so that's not gonna be there. So you wanna open them both up in something like Dreamweaver, which I have open right here. If you don't use Dreamweaver, that's fine. You can do it in Notepad or any other kind of text code editor. So let's just get them both open real quick. The first file is the index file. And this file basically just serves to explain this plugin to the WordPress system when you're installing it. So the plugin name, I have a symbol code wrapper widget, change it to whatever you want. Description, author, URL, all that stuff you can change. Uh, the thing that I originally used as a template had all of this stuff up here. So I just left it, seems fine. I don't care if someone modifies this code. And now you're gonna change all of this to your liking. The, the biggest thing I can suggest here is that you consistently use the same term throughout all references to it. So in other words, if you wanna call your new plugin um, Zach's plugin, make sure that every single place in these files that it says code wrapper, you replace that with Zach's plugin or whatever you decide to call it. If you're doing something that has um, multiple words, it's probably the best idea just to tie them together into one long word, just to make sure things work. So we see we have require once code wrapper dot class dot PHP, which if we look in our folder is the name of that other file. So it's basically grabbing this other PHP file that I had you open. And that's where all the actual code is for the plugin. Then right here, there's this function to register the widget, which just sets up that widget with WordPress. And then this action initiates that widget registration, I think. But now for the real meat of it. If you go into this code wrapper.class.php file, that's where our whole widget is. Um, so you'll again want to replace all of this stuff. Um, this right here, I'm pretty sure is how the widget displays in the admin area. And I'm going to make sure real quick before I tell you that. Um, I'm just going to update it and look at it in my site. 
Yeah, so see how it added all these Zs? I would know that it was not the way it displayed in the site if I added those Zs and it like broke it. But because it just changed how it displayed, we know that this field right here is the title for the widget in the WordPress dashboard. So I'll even add a little comment for you. And then right here, this description part is what shows right under it. So see how it says wraps whatever you type in with code? That is just typed in right here. If you don't want a description, you can just delete this and keep those two single quotes like that. And it'll just say code wrapper below it or whatever you decided the title of it was. The class you'll want to replace with whatever you decided and whatever you're doing consistently. So for me, it's code wrapper. So I put that everywhere. You'll replace it with whatever. Scrolling down, uh, we see that this there's this public function to create a form. This creates the form that you fill out in the widget area. And you see right here, I have this little comment that says these are the default values. So you can just type the values in between the single quotes. So uh, when we go in here, if I add a new code wrapper widget, we see that title is empty and the what you want wrapped field is empty. But the what you want wrapped has this little watermark, which I'll explain in a minute. If I wanted the title field to be pre-populated with something, or if I wanted the wrapped field to be pre-populated, you would just type those here in the defaults, and then that would be there when they first drag the widget in. So if there's something that people are probably going to type almost every time, you can save them some time by just having it as a default. This right here is the HTML code for the actual form. Uh, and so we have these paragraphs wrapping labels and inputs. So the label would be the text that says title, and then the input is the actual input field. And you'll notice here that these all correspond with these. Uh, so whenever you have like this underscore parenthesis single quote thing, that's usually the title like that's displayed, not the kind of code title, so you can change it. But when you have something where it says like get field ID, that definitely needs to correspond up here. So if you wanted to add more fields, for example, so if in addition to a code field, you wanted to have, I don't know, code two field, you would just want to add it up here and then you'd be free to create another label and input for it in the form. But for this one, it's just kind of a simple one field form. And I don't know this for sure, but I'm pretty sure that you always need to have a title field even if you're not going to use it. But again, I don't know that for sure. And remember earlier when I talked about that watermark text? That's what this little bit right here is, this placeholder thing. This placeholder shows up as a watermark in a field. So if you want instructional text there but you don't want it to actually be default text, uh, use the placeholder. It's very simple. Then as we continue to scroll down, we see this public function for updating. And what this does is it allows me to actually have this stuff be saved. So if I did this update part wrong, then when I type stuff in here and click save, it wouldn't work. So these fields need to match these fields. So like title needs to say title here, code needs to say code here, and they need to match whatever you have up here. So every field you add needs to be here, here, and here. Then as we continue scrolling down, we see the public function widget. So this is what renders the actual live site display. So let me give you a good example of when this could be useful. Let's say we go to YouTube and we just embed this Jimmy Kimmel video, for example. And if we look up at the top, we see that it's got this HSJMOH blah, 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 blah. Let me pause it. Uh, so if I go share, and then embed, I'm going to just grab this whole code. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to paste it just right here for now. So instead of it having all this div and stuff, just paste that there. Um, and so what, what I'm going to do here, I'm, I'm showing you this, is I'm going to make it so that the person can just type in a YouTube video ID and it wraps it with all the embed code. So basically what I want to do is take this part, cut it out, and paste it right here so that it's after the input. Then I want to get rid of the actual ID. And then this should be what I need uh, because when they type in that ID, it's just going to put it into this iframe. Now, my sidebar is not 420 pixels wide. 
So this is gonna like either be cut off or overflow the sidebar, but that's okay. I just wanted to show you functionality. So if I save this and then I update it on my site, which I'll show you all this part later, and then I grab this ID from up here. If I now go into my back end, let me refresh it just to make sure everything is still good. Uh, I'll go into this one and just paste that ID and click save. Now if I refresh it, we see an embedded YouTube video, so it's very cool. We see that this one's broken because remember this one still says hi there from earlier, so that's obviously not a YouTube code. But this one did indeed work, so that's really cool, right? Um, and this, this opens up a ton of possibilities, especially with clients, like I said earlier, because the thing that sucks <clears throat> sometimes with WordPress and clients is that Occasionally, you'll have to have them like weeding through, um, you know, code, which you don't want them to do because they'll accidentally delete a closing tag or something and break the whole site. And so, by taking this approach, you really you eliminate the entire possibility of them making mistakes. So it's awesome, um, and really the, the possibilities are only limited here by your own imagination and, of course, code skills. Because what I showed you today is a very simple widget because it's really all that I know how to do. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I hope this helps you. I'm going to undo all these and stuff. So remember, click the link below this video to download these source files so you can get working on your own. Uh, last little thing I'll show you. It seems obvious, but it also might not be obvious. I'm going to show you how you can actually, once you've edited these, install them on your WordPress site through the dashboard. And if you ever get errors when you're installing it, it probably means that you, somewhere along the line, did not replace code wrapper with your own widget, like with your own widget name. Or if you decided to just leave it as code wrapper, that's also fine, uh, but you probably wouldn't get errors in that case. So let's say we have this all edited like we want. What we're gonna do is just zip up these two files. And then in our WordPress dashboard, I first need to delete this plugin. And then it's really just like any other plugin. You can just go plugins and then add new, upload, choose file, choose your zip and click install now. You can also do it via FTP if you'd prefer because then you don't have to do it in the zip. So when you click activate, this will be the make or break. If, you, if you're going to get an error, it's probably gonna be right now when you activate it. So if you don't see any errors up at the top, which I don't, that means everything's good. So you could go over to your uh, appearance widgets and you should see your widget somewhere in the list so I see my code wrapper one right here so I hope this has been helpful please like and uh, leave comments below let me know what you think of this video if you have questions whatever and of course visit learnwithzack.com for more tutorials like this one and to learn other cool things about code thanks a lot